This episode is brought to you by TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com is your all access to culture. Check out cultural merchandise like leggings, hats, mini boxing gloves and bags. Also t-shirts like hip-hop, nature, rock bands, reggae and dark fantasy. Fast shipping worldwide. That's TwoLinedMusicCutStore.com Now let's check out this episode. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a superstar 80s legend in the building. Listen, this man gave you hits after hits after hits, albums after albums. You've seen him on some of the biggest shows, and right now, he has out a new song with Christopher Martin called Ignorant right now. You know we have in the building today? We have Mr. Admiral Bailey in the building today. What's going on, Big Boss? Yeah, man, greetings, man, to all of the crew, all of the massive them out there, you know. Original Big Belly man himself. No carbon copy, no imitation. <laughs> yeah, man, Canada and the world. Me, this man. You get it. From my here to laugh, I know 100% this is the man that we're talking about, Mr. Bailey. Same one. All right. So on this program here, we like to take it right from the beginning and then bring it up to 2021 right now. So my first question for you is this. Where did you grow up in Jamaica and what attracted you to music in the first place? Well, Mr. original Kingston 11, man. You know, that's in the Olympic yard era. Mm-hmm. Um, many people know it better known as Copper Ben and, and Towile, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, as a youth growing up, there was a lot of um artists especially one that i idolized um that was ranking joe um i hear ranking joe for the first time on racing ballot and then i hear him on king star graph mm-hmm. um after listening to him and watching him i said no nah, man I, this one the man want to be like that man, that man so what i used to do when i leave school and come home you know we used to step on the corner as you would um, this other youth we call him Pele. So me and Pele used to compete, and uh, you know, but we compete who can drop the baddest ranking Joe lyrics, you know. And it, it all started um, from there. And then now, further down in my career, when I would say I start to slow leak, mm-hmm. then the, the next artist that really inspired me. Was 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 Josie Wheel in terms of, you know, yeah, I, I make up my mind now. This 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 is the direction I want to take, and and this is what I want to. Okay, so it was first ranking Joe and then Josie, but the thing with it, both of them are connected to Stereograph one way or another, because Ray Symbolic first with um, ranking Joe, and then he went to Stereograph, and with Josie too, he was around Stereograph. So did you start out on a sound system, or you were just? Doing your thing. What were you doing? How did you start out? No, oh, well, original. Listen, it's just nowadays artists go as true and us, us stand up and, and bust, you know, or stay at the yard and go on social media and bust, you know. Back in the days, you, you, you have to bust off a sound system. Yeah, sound system was the, 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 the key, yeah, where um, bring your food to the world and then the music just expand that. But, um, most definitely, you know, I was I was more I was recognized first, you know, on the sound system. I started out on a little sound named Twilight. Yeah, that um a man named Fatman own own in Capern Pen. Mm-hmm. And and is half a Twilight. And then I move on to Roots Melody. Yeah, when me and Shaba used to DJ upon Roots Melody. Mm-hmm. And that is where, you know, all of the people all of the sound them that we end up are the two sound that I end up um, DJing and heard me from. Um, you were uh, hearing me from Twilight mm. and, um, you know, asked me to come and join the King Sturgraff family. And then um, that never lasts too long. That's what I was going to say. Uh, what year? Do you remember what year you got to start? I uh, know. Um, that was about 86, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about 86, that, 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 never, that never lasts. Late 85, early 86. Mm-hmm. You know, because you don't know, you ride the teacher, and we love him. You know, God pass on, mm-hmm. God rest his soul. But mm-hmm. it wasn't one of the easiest person to really get along with, you know? 
So that didn't last. That didn't last for long. Um, after that, now I move on to Roots Melody, mm -hmm. where you know I meet up with um, Shabarangs and you know with Dede. So that is where um, I leave. I'm going to, go to Jamins. Um, while on on Roots Melody, um, Bobby Digital come and listen to the song one night and and hear me. Mm -hmm. and, and and go back and tell King Jam and say, why you want to go to Admiral Bailey? But I forget him, you know? And, you know, just, just to know you're going to come to that. So, mm -hmm. you know, that is just the early days of that. And, and it's so I reached out to Jammins without mm -hmm. elaborating until you, you get to that side. All right. And how long were you on Roots Melody for? I was at Roots Melody for, for a little while, man. I was at Roots Melody for maybe two years, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I was at Twilight long ago. I was at Twilight. Twilight was the, <clears throat> the start out sound for me. Mm -hmm. So I spent some time at Twilight, and then I, I moved on to Roots Melody. Yeah, I was at Roots Melody, as I said, for about, about two to three years, somewhere mm -hmm. along that line. And who else? You said Shabba was on it. Who else was on the sound there? Yeah, man, Shabba was on it. Um, you have a DJ named Clement Irie mm -hmm. um, was on it. Um, Leslie Thunder was on it. Kiba Ranks was on it, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 all of us, um, you know, used to be on that on, on that song. Um, DJ in the night time. Um, um, Roots Melody were more like a a kind of song, though, you know, in which uh, most of the, the the dance key on the roadside. Okay. While Twilight, no, I think Twilight was a song that. Apart from Jamins, that that carry me uh, um, more over, like you know, going to country, playing in lands, and all of that. It's just that um, <clears throat> Roots Melody. Now, I think you have to give Roots uh, Melody the credit um, to 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 really opening up um, people like Bobby Digital and, and Jamins' eyes to me. For sure. And even your name, before we get to the Jammy situation here, your name, Admiral Bailey. How did you get your name? Well, um, as I say, you know, you know, coming from school, wanting to be a DJ. Back in, a, in a that days, if you do the research, you'd see that um, there was a lot of a army name, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah? A lot of a, a, a army name. Um, remember back in that days, you have uh, General Penn, you have uh, Brigadier Jerry, you have Colonel Josie Wheel, you know, you have a lot of, of, of people with, with army name, just to name a few. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, looking for a name, you know, um, we, we come up with Admiral, you know, um, because we, you know, we wanted to, to, to from, from that early, early days, show a form of dominance and our, our form of leadership. So, you know, we 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 look it up, and we 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 saw that Admiral was the commander, yeah, of a navy fleet, yeah. So, you know, you have Admiral Nemis, you have Admiral this, Admiral that. So I just keep my last name. I say Admiral Bailey. You know, so that is how the name come about, and it, it does stick exactly. from then. Big, big, big name there. All right. So Jammies now, do you remember when you got to Jammies, your first night on Jammies, and who was on Jammies when you got there? Come on. Well, um, <clears throat> as I said, going to Jammies, Jammies, um, Bobby Digital was the one that mentioned, um, mentioned me to Jammies. Mm -hmm. um, Jammies sent car me one day, and I, and, I, and I jumped on a bus, an eight bus at the time. That was eight bus. And I went down to Waterhouse. When I went down to Waterhouse, Jamis was living on the premises where the shooter is at the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I stand up, he sat on his veranda, and, and we were having a discussion. And he said, well, he hear about me. Yeah, and he wanted another DJ on the sound because um, Tonto Irie um, was the main DJ on the sound at the time. But Tonto Irie, Tonto Ari and Chaka Demons was the main DJ on the sound at the time. But um, Tonto Ari was mostly overseas, you know, 
going away a lot and you know chakademos him said chakademos did some help um when we have the discussion i tell him that boy you know no he said to me say so how much would you charge a night so i said to him say boy you know i'm coming from king's Telegraph, and you i used to pay me 300 dollars mm -hmm. back in the days 300 dollars a month time mm -hmm. because i remember my first 300 dollars where you i give me when i went downtown to shop yeah i i buy a lot of things and still come home with change <laughs> so you know i tell him that and when I tell him that, he laugh, you know, <laughs> he laugh out and say, well, boy, we can't pay that, you know, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. He said, boy, well, I can't pay that, you know what I mean? So, before I could answer him, um, Chakademus ride up on a bicycle at the time. Mm -hmm. And he introduced me to Chakademus, and Chakademus said something to him and, and leave. You know, and, and, and he said to me, I don't have to answer him right now. Mm -hmm. I can't go and go think about it and then come check him back. Well, when he said that, I, I stood there for a little while, you know, and, and start to think. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I said to myself, so well, Twilight, Sturgraph, and Roots Melody. That's a song. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, it was a CD. Not, not CD, cassette. Yeah. Yeah. And if a man don't play him tape, him don't hear you. And when I, I when I was home, you know, I, I used to hear the, the radio and the records and the radio and yellow man, them man, chosen wheel, them man. And I mean I said to myself, say, that is where I want to carry my career. That is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I, I want to people listening to me worldwide on the record. And Jamie have a studio. You know, only have a sound in our studio. Now, all of this, I got through my head standing up there. So I said, well, I used to get in 300. So I, 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 oh, before that, he said, he can give me $100 a ton and $150 when we play in the country. Hmm. So if you do the maths, you see right away that my pay is cutting in more than half at some stage. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know, when I think about it, I said, well, I might be losing the 200 dollars now, but in the long term, I'll be getting what I really want. So I didn't went home and, and come back and answer him. And I answer him right there on the spot. I tell him that I will work. You know, I say, yeah, man, I'll, I'll work for that. And he said, yeah, and I say, yeah, man. <clears throat> and he said, so when you can start, because I have a dance tonight, you know, on Red Hills Road. Yeah. All right, there. I said, can I start tonight, man? And I said, well, tell me the dance. I keep on ready to And I said, well, all right. Come on the dance tonight, I ready to So when I went to the dance, I didn't ask him who I on the sound, but I used to hear some Jamis cassette before I went there. And I know that John Wayne was there, Pompidou was there, Toloti was there, um, Nitty Gritty as a singer was there. Dan Angelo was there, and Chakadims, and Tontoy. So I have an idea of some of the artists and the song. So when I reach at the dance the night, because the time the dance started early enough, I'm here talking the dance started. And I was at the dance, and uh, Toops, which is the selector, tell the rest of the artists them that, you know, I am now a part of the team. I am, I, I am a DJ you now, and so on. And I stand up there, you know, and then pass the mic left, then pass the mic right, and I know I can't get the mic. You know, the mic I pass around, around and around me. And I stand up there for about maybe two hours. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <clears> to <throat> put on a the one song, or a the one rhythm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm afraid of free that. Or they might test me if you see if. I can't manage it. I mean, I drop off of it. I don't want to flap it. I don't know. I can't read mic. Mm -hmm. But then give me the mic. I want them give me the mic. Two, we are come from them days there and we surround ourselves with them type of DJ. Then. We know for right them rhythm there. 
So I, I wrap up the rhythm and mash it up, man, and the dance. Be a forward ball and the dance. And be a thing, man. I guess a pass, yeah, the stairs one that night. Mm -hmm. Then we went to a place named Arborview in the country. I didn't even know that because at the time, because I thought it was only one Arbor View in Jamaica and it was the one out of uh, airport where they. Mm -hmm. But I get to find out that there's an Arbor View right at the border between St. Mary and St. Anne's down at Wochi where they. And we do a dance down there that night because Jamie never come to the dance or his brother and read his word. You know? Yeah? But Jamie come to the dance and watch him. So Jamie hear me for the first time I watch it and the song and the brother. And you know, him, him, not even than give me the approval. Anyway, the song was leaving from there that night to go to Portland to play at another dance in Portland the other night. But through me and the rookie, I don't care, I don't vehicle, I have to drive by the chop. All I rest are top star, them gone in. Yeah, Chakademus, John Wayne, um, Toloti, everybody go back at town. Anyway, me and Pompidou pulled the, the truck again the next morning and head to Portland, find a river, bed, and ready for the dancing of the night. You know, the night now we did it, I woke the dance. Because them telling me I woke the dance, man. And I wait for the big star them for come. Eventually, when we look, no big star I come and time I run out. So boy, I just go down in my lyrics box you know, and took us track the rhythm them and track the tune them, you know. I mean, I tell them time the gunshot was a fire and a dance. Man. Be a gunshot, you know. Be a gunshot. Be a forward. I mean, just a much of the dance me and pump you know, you know. And the man in me here when jamming, when Trevor call him brother jamming, and said, boy, jamming, we find the right DJ now, brother. Admiral Bud. And from this up, the stop start dance. We are prime time. Yeah, right to we becomes the man, me and Chaka Demos. Yeah. Big, 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 and big the John Wayne and the Pompidou and the Tullity and all of them now have a warm up dance till me come. <laughs> you know, so just to make a, a short turn, that's 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 how it it, 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 it take off. Mm -hmm. Because you mentioned Studio One, because I remember getting a Jammies cassette where it was all you were playing, they were playing all Studio One, and it was you and Tola T mashing up the dance with Strictly Studio One. No, man. Me, no, no, no. It wasn't Tola T. It was me no, it was Hunter Irie. Hunter Irie, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, man. Classic dance here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What other big nights do you remember on Jammies? Because you said you graduated very quickly to being the big man there. Oh, well, from that, I'm here, the man, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, becomes the man, you know, and and we start vice now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jamis, <clears throat> Jamis put me in the show, you know, and we start record. So, you know, say it triple up, football up, being the man. Yeah, because the first track um, that, that Jamis released with me, um, got platinum in England. It was a song named Top Celebrity Man. Yes. Top okay. Celebrity Man, the young, right? That was the first song, single that Jamis released with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then he put out one scotch with me and Chaka Demos. How did you guys come up with that combination at that time? Well, to be to be fair and to be frank, I mean, I'm mean, need to tell a lie. It was Chaka Demos' idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Chaka Demos' idea for us to, to do the collab. Mm -hmm. And it was Chaka Demos' idea uh, where the topic was, was concerned, one scotch topic. But in terms of the lyrical context, into the verses, Mm -hmm. Him write theme part, me write my part. He never tell me what to say or what to sing. And I didn't tell him what to say or what to sing. And, you know, it does, it does, it does, it does, it does magic. You know what I mean? So, right through then, it's like everything me touch does turn to gold. All of the song them becomes it. Yeah? Me make all that, me make all, me make history that enough Radio Jack and enough journalists don't mention up to this day. Talk to us. Uri, Uri was one at the time, was one of the only DJ that have number one, number two, number three on the chart in Jamaica with a lot of more songs in the top ten. And I have, I have come and, and, and do, done that too. And nobody mentioned that. 
What were the songs? Under this day, year? apart from you, Rai, I am the only DJ that at any given time in Jamaica had the number one song, the number two song, the number three song, then it skipped number four and I have the number five song and the number seven, eight, nine, and ten song. And I, I don't hear history talk about that all now. Okay, so something like that. Do you remember what year this was and what songs were on? Year to seven, may I tell you about? Year to seven, may I tell you about the monster year? 1987. And we are talking about Punani. We are talking about Think Me the Done. Yeah, and we are talking about old time something. One, two, and three. Crazy. Okay. Right? And at, the, and at the time, and at the time, and at the time, they, they were the one that lick off each other to go to the number one position. And all three went to number one. So the, the number three move and go one, two, or one, or whatever, right through. Yeah? And I have about, I have about, about, about seven songs at the time in the top 10, plus, because it was top 20, I think, at the time. Plus, man, dozens of songs in the top 20. And history don't mention that. Now we just caught it right here live to tell the people. Okay, let's talk about Panani. The rhythm with Panani now. Do you actually name the rhythm or because you did the big song on it? Name, that's why the rhythm. Yeah, because I did the big song on it, it they, they rename it Panani. Uh, when it was just um, uh, Mech, it didn't make us put on the rhythm. Yeah, but my big song yeah, that goes international, worldwide, and the name, yeah, Jamin's renamed the rhythm, put on the rhythm. Mm -hmm. But I know at that time their radio didn't want to play it because clearly this is the X-rated version and you had to right. re-record it as Healthy Body. As Healthy Body, right. Mm -hmm. That's all. And, and, and Healthy Body go right down there too in the top 10. I think Healthy Body ended up going number three or so. It didn't go number one, but it ended up going right down there. Mm -hmm. Big. Old Time Something. How did you come up with that one there? Well, old time something, you know, is a festival song that it in Jamaica, if you do your research, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it was a song sung by, by Tinga Stuart. Yeah, I, I don't remember the year that the festival sang um, 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 it, but the original name, though, is um, No Way No Better Than Yard. Uh, if you remember the Tinga Stuart, they say, Oh, when me check it out, Lord, No Way No Better Than Yard, No Way No Better Than Yard, oh, no. It was a festival song. So I take that festival uh, punchline, mm -hmm. yeah, and put it with my idea and send it off old time something because, because it was an old festival song, mm -hmm. right? That's why I use the term old time something come back again. Yeah, and then say old time something come back again. Go around the bend and go tell your friend, when me check it out, lad, no way no better than yard. Yeah. So everything else, everything else is my lyrics. Yeah. I just use that part of that old time, that chorus, and, and, and put it in it, into it. So it's so the idea. Come on. All right. I want to talk about two more of your songs here. Big Belly Man. How did you come up with, with um, Big Belly Man? Well, Big Belly Man was made on Fort Clarence, 1987. I think that the, the late part of 87 to early 88. I think it's 87. Um, a champion in action. That's a show that Jim Brown used to keep at Fort Clarence Beach every year. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time now, they yeah, run the place. So you don't know, start eat a lot, start bleed, start drink a woolly. So I start get a belly. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at the music industry and look outside in, the music industry also, with some people who have top name and, and successful, they have big belly. So I said, hold on, man. If you want money, you have, your belly have to be big because all of them, man, they, where you hear me call them name in the song, they have money. Steal them, Jammins, George Spang, Jim Brown, all of them, man. They. Yeah? So, and, 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 so I saw come up with the idea and, 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 and um, the first time I dropped it uh, over Elsha, over Fort Clarence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it, it does it does set off. And and then what happened to you know back in those days, you know? We have to give credit where credit is due, you know. Mm -hmm. You see, Lyde King Jamie's dreams, him have a talent in which when you have a lyrics, him know which rhythm to put mm -hmm. that lyrics on. 
Yeah, so at the same time, Steel Lily can read him what they call agony. Pinchers do a song, but they say agony, agony, agony in her body, the agony, agony. Yeah, and that's the same with him. I do big belly man, right? And then end up again call the rhythm big belly man read it because through the song, it I'm a man stop on it, but it wasn't me, it was the first artist voice on it. But all of the song them come out one time. Right? And if you notice, know, the song is mercy. Hey. Bye bye bye. Bye 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 Base, man, we're surrounded mm -hmm. with environment where we are sick, what happened. Yeah, we build the lyrics after that. For sure. This is another one way but big song here. News flash time. How did you come up with news flash time? As I said before, that's what I just said to you a while ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're surrounded, mm -hmm. your environment, yeah, things that is happening around you, things that people are saying. Mm -hmm. Things that is, is people are doing, yeah. So you you you, you come up with the idea based on all of them something, right? Because when me when me as a younger stay that as a youth in my community, yeah, my my me not grow up in a rich family. My mother never have it like that, yeah. Enough time me have to eat um dumpling and butter, uh, 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 milk and bread and them something, yeah. All original ghetto youth and ghetto people can 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 verify to this when they talk about. Yeah, any man where same go through the struggle and him, him go through the real struggle and, and never eat uh um, but um dumpling and butter. He never go through no struggle. Yeah. Sometimes your pants about to tear out and then look at something, your shoes lean, your, your the shoes but um dig out. Yeah. So I say, you know, what will happen? And, and, and at them stage, when, when a girl see them wear she don't want you. So, a way, a way happen. Yeah? So, me, I said, news flash time. This is a news flash time. When I was a youth in the community, tear up body pants, my mom put on me. Days up and days, white squall I kill me. None of the girl them never want me. You understand? But now me come a man as a top celebrity. All of the girl them are mad over me, because money start me. Big belly man go number one, Punani go number one, jump up go number one, tick me the dun go number one, science again go number one, just to name a few. You get what I say? Crazy, crazy. So as me I say, are you surrounding the things where happen to your back in them days that so we come up with lyrics? We don't put pen put to paper. Got you. 100% understood that one song that was definitely a pivotal moment in your career was Tink Me The Done. Why would you record that song? And what was really the thinking behind that song here? What was going on in your career? All right, I'm going to be more specific with this one, but it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Surrounding. What is happening at the time? Yeah? Mm -hmm. What is happening at the time? At that time when that song um, record, yeah, if you if you remember, 1987, me and Luton and Stitchy in a ding-dong buckle, right? To the right of becoming DJ of the year. Hmm. Yeah? No, so Stitchy put out a song, so me put out a song. So me put out a song, so Stitchy put out a song. So the two of we are ding dang buckle. Yeah? So Stitchy having fun. Just like a vibes cartel and a Mavada in, in modern time. Stitchy having fun, me have my fun. My fan them say I me, mean, Stitchy fan them say I him. Yeah? So you, you, you compete for put out boom song. Mm -hmm. Right? So... I think what happened at that time, um, I put out a song and then Stitch would come out now with Natty Dreadlocks of a face all type of living. When him come out with that song, when I sang the first drop, it run away. Mm -hmm. I went to run away because theme song come out before mine. Yeah, see him rhythm and everything, jammy rhythm, but I didn't vice at the time on the rhythm. Stitch advised before me and jammy put it out and it run away. Now, it was coming down to the end of the year where them go and decide what the DJ of the year. When that put out and it run away, everybody has said, I can't get back. Everybody has said, I hate that. It don't know. Admiral, don't know. Stitch a win now. Mm -hmm. Yeah? 
So, go into the studio, Jammy put on the rhythm, and the only thing in that song that didn't plan was the laugh. Because it's so me laugh originally, you know. Yeah? Yeah. When we get that joke and the joke sweet, that's so me laugh. I don't remember what happened at the time when we in the studio. Um, but Trevor was there, that's Jammy Brother and Jammy's and me. Mm -hmm. Somebody says something, one of them says something. And Jammy pressed the red button and I didn't know. And I end up I laugh. <laughs> so when I when I laughed and I realized, say the tape are roll. I said to Jammy, say, yo, Jammy, rewind the tape and, and, and come again when we start the show down. And Jammy said to me, say, you're mad. As I said to you before, that is the genius of Jammy's in terms of, of being a producer and why he separated himself from the rest. Jammy said, you're mad. We are keep that. That are going on the song, that bad. I said, all right, God, I always trust in him and he trust me. So we have a good working relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then pick up after the laugh. I'ma say, you don't think me did done? You don't think me did done? Hey, you don't think me did done? Bitch, you suck home, tell them at me coming in the art. So that that dedicated to Stitchy and in fan them. Because they must say me can't get back and me don't know. Can't win. Yeah. So when that drop, you know the history behind it. History tell itself. Straight and number one it go. Yeah, and the, and the DJ the year come right. I mean, I'm a big trophy when I go collect. So as I said to you, say, surrounding and walk up around you, yeah, we used to DJ about. They can just take you back a little, although you never ask about that, but I can share that magic here. Mm -hmm. The song Science Again, that also went to number one. How do you think I made that song? I made that song when, while I was in Canada. Jamins was on tour in Canada, and I was on tour with Jamins in Canada. But Jamie didn't come and tour with us. I just a sound. Mm -hmm. And I just bought a car like a couple months ago. I leave the car and, and my brother and my nephew. I don't know how they find the key, but they find the key. I drive out the car. I'm going to crash the car right it off, turn it over, mash it up. And I was in the Canadian, no, I was in Canada, in the Jamaica, no lie, in the Canadian embassy. Mm -hmm. Because the visa that we went up on was was starting to expire. Mm -hmm. So we went to the, the Canadian embassy to renew the visa. And when I was in there at the time, at is Mumaris come tell me because Mumaris come and tour with us. That's Jamie wife. Mm -hmm. So Jamie called Mumaris and, and tell tell her the story and she come to me. I said, Boy, well, you know, say so you can't mash up at Jamaica. Your, your brother and your nephew T for the car and, and mash it up. And right there, <laughs> right there and then in the embassy, Miss Middles Ball out and says, Science! Hubakaba, <laughs> Hubakaba, so no mash up the car. Yeah? And just Billy Lewis, right, right in the embassy. Yeah? And Canada, and as I, as, I, as I come off of the tour and come down, mm -hmm. I'm going to the studio, I lick, I, I slap it, and as I slap it, Straight and number one. So I just something I tell you, magic. Crazy. Cause in that time there, did you get into a motorcycle accident at the same time around then also? And break no, but that was, yeah, but that was a couple of years after, you know. That okay. was after science again. Yeah, but I did. I I um I fell out um hit me off on my bike and you know, the dislocated my shoulder and and, 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 and the thing I liked with you from beginning, you were always a triple threat. You were wicked on song, wicked on stage show, and wicked on recording. There was a sting 1991 with you, Papa San, and Tiger. Well, all three of you guys on stage. This is when Tiger had a cordless mic. Do you remember that night at Sting? Yeah, man, I remember the night. I remember the night, man. And 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 that was that, as I say, that was a big night because. What happened is that I, I didn't know that that's the way it was going to, to conduct. Mm -hmm. In terms of, I thought everybody was going to do them individual performance. Mm -hmm. And when I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I got there and, and, and Tiger went on stage and him called up Papa San, and then Papa San and him called me up, I was shocked, you know, because... You know that 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 wasn't the way it planned. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But, you know, knowing me, anything will happen, me and I. Mm-hmm. So, right there and then, me have to scrap my my running order with the band in terms of my program with, that I rehearse with the band to perform. And, and, and Tiger and Papa San start, you have to give them credit with a, with a piece of energy they on the stage where I cannot mm-hmm. and I could not come on the stage and do match that energy or surpass it. Mm-hmm. So on my way onto the stage, I signaled to Derek Barnett, one of the greatest band's musicians ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I signaled to him and let him know that, listen, I am chewing my rehearsal program out the door, you know. See? So you know what you do? My first song that I'm coming on with is not the first song that I rehearse. Go into the middle and go up on this rhythm. And Derek Barnett did that. And when I run up on the stage, and I say, them a fight. Over me body, the girl them a ball. Over me bad, 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 bad. Stadium erupt. Because that thing keep at the National Stadium. Okay, that was stadium. Yeah? National Stadium, we're, we're black. Because, listen to me, I am not trying to damper anyone's performance or anyone's achievement. You know? mm-hmm. But what Buju did at the stadium, is not the first that happened. Maybe you could say it's the first you announce a one artist and that happened. And at the, at the night, too, it was one artist. Paris was there and a lot of his, his friends was there. Yeah? So sometimes when we 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 hype up about something, we have to we do a research mm-hmm. because that wasn't the first time stadium did look like that when Bojo was there. Stadium looked like that 1991 thing with me, Papa San, and Tiger and the rest of the artists also. That was big. And what was even interesting to see you and Papa San on the stage together? Because I remember there was a Jammies, uh, 86 Jammies versus African Symbol, where it was you and Papa San going at it. You remember that dance, sir? Yeah, man, I remember that dance. But you see, that is all we are. You know? we, are the, we are the competitors. You know? And, and when, when it's time for us to compete, we compete. But at the end of the, 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 the competitiveness, there's no, no vindictive feelings, no hard malice. No, no grudge, nobody now want to kill them one another and all of them, something like some of the things that, that we see um, in later years. But that, that does us we because if you don't put on your competitive face uh, mm-hmm. uh, and get yourself gear up, you're going to get left behind. You know, so at the end of the day, when we go at it, um, down at um, Mobile, mm-hmm. that's, that's thing, that thing, that wasn't the moment like that. The, the moment was for us to combine as artists and, and, and entertain the p and mm-hmm. So, you just have to make the adjustment. You just have to know that, you know, this is what you have to do now and do what you have to do now. Crazy. One name we didn't bring up in this conversation, big name on Jamies too, Major Worries. You remember some nights with Major Worries? But that is another credit that I don't get, you know. That's why more time I mean, mention it because I was the one. I was the one that was, you could have used the word apprentice in major words. Hmm. I, I don't teach him how to DJ. I don't write what he DJ. But I'm me carry him. When he come to Jamins, them shelf him like how they try to shelf me. And I put him on my wings. Hmm. Yeah? And I, and I give him my in some prime time stage in the dance where normally if I didn't put him on my wing, he couldn't be DJing at that time. Because when Major Rose come to Jamie, he's come to Jamie and I start the dance like what I did. Mm-hmm. But I, I liked him and I see the potential in him, in him and I started to put him on my wings. The, the night or the day before he died, mm-hmm. yeah, we were at Fort Clarence and I showed him fresh. And it's me calling him up on stage because I never booked for the show. Hmm. Because at that time, he never reached him full potential yet. He were, were getting there. So, 
when you talk about shooter it, just like what Monty Killer do or did for so many artists, I did that also for major worries. Wicked, wicked, wicked artist. He was he died way too early in his career at that time there. Yeah, so man. He, really. Yeah, man, you now going through, you did all these great stuff in the 80s, and then now the 90s came up now. Was it easy for you to adjust in the 90s, or it became a little bit difficult because of when you came in the game and was so hot earlier on in your career? Well, um, no, in the 90s, we still were, you know, we, um, we may have been never that dominant like how we used to be in the 80s, but we, we still were, uh, we still um, clash in terms of with some of the best during the 90s. Um, you know, we still we still do a thing, but I think what happened with me, mm. I have never left the game, but uh, I find time to do other things. You know, like I get I get interested back in coaching um, soccer, in which I did, yeah. And, um, you know, some other little business aspect I had, that I ventured into mm -hmm. and, and do less recording yeah, in the 90s um, come up. So that is why I think, you know, I wasn't that dominant in the 90s and the 2000s in which I had capable of doing because... With this new song now that 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 I have out with me and Christopher Martin, let's mm -hmm. go to show you that it's not that I had lost it. I don't remember how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just that you could say I get um, distracted. That's the right word. Yeah, from what I do best. So I am now back in the studio. I am now doing some work, working on some other project because. I want to do as quickly as possible the follow-ups and I use I put on the S on it specifically <laughs> because it's not a one or a two song, but I specifically want to do the follow-ups where this song is concerned because this song is creating such a wave now that if I do the right thing, it will put me right back there as it, in the 80s. How did that song come up together? Because you from the 80s, him from the 2000s, how did you guys connect and make that song sound well, so it was, it was, well, it was, well, it was the producer. You have to give the producer credit. Mm -hmm. um, Bulby. And Bulby is that kind of producer. He's one of them producers that like, like Jamis that is creative. Mm -hmm. um, let the mind work for him and then come up with the right suggestion and the right plan. Um, you know, we have to give Bulby the producer the credit. For, for that, for, for bringing us together, yeah, and, and, and bringing us together, knowing what he wanted out of us. That was bringing us together, you know, alone, but also knowing what he wanted out of us. The, the type of rhythm and all the, 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 the sound mix. Because if you listen to the sound mix, that is what one of the things that is letting the sound create so much impact. Mm -hmm. Because the sound mix and the sound and the lyrical contents and all the sound deliver, I give you back a feel of the 80s and yet still a next feel of the, 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 the 20s that we're in now. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it giving you a, a, a feel of what used to happen in the dance hall back in the 80s and then yet still it cross over to the younger generation or, or appeal to the younger generation yeah, so that is what I think is really letting the sound be so so dominant so early that 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 it is doing, and and Christopher Martin also you have to give him credit because there's a lot of people never hear Chris, Christopher Martin in this type of of of, of style dance hall style or you know what I mean? Where it's going now. So, you know, it's a difference. It, it, it opened my eye on my side. And people say, what? Admiral still have it. And it opened eyes in Christopher's side by people say, what? In Kangoya Sato. 
So that is what I think that make this song so dominant and so effective. Yeah. And 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 people are really, you know, embracing it. And what's the name of the song? And will we be seeing any music videos or visuals for it? Well, the name of the song is called Ignorant. And we are just expressing ourselves and, and making you know that, you know, when a person gets ignorant, it can be dark, it can act fool fool. And, and we are human beings. There are times when we do get ignorant. Mm. Yeah. And um, Christopher Martin is presently off the island now. So we can discuss the video aspect of this song until he's back mm -hmm. and, and, and we get together uh, and the producer and see where we go from here. But, you know, so far it, it, it has been doing what we wanted to do and living up to the rounds. Good. And you said, as we could see right now, you're in the studio, so we could be expecting some new music 2021 and beyond from Admiral Bailey right now. Yeah, man. That's what I tell you. We, we're going to follow up that. We're not, we're not sit down on this one and then you don't hear no more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, they are Bulby, which is the producer, had a discussion and there are more ideas um, that we have that we're looking at. So you might even get an EP from me or a album. You know what I mean? Okay, because it's been it's been a while since you actually put out a full body of work, like an album or anything. Yeah, man, it's been a while. But that's why I tell you that I'm not going to get lazy on this project. I'm not going to get lazy on uh, uh, this. Um, I ask Father God for a second opportunity and a second run in the music business. And, you know, this look like he's answering me. So, you know, I, I cannot be ungrateful. So, you know, I have to just finish what I ask him far for sure for sure if they want to check out your music or anything are you on social media or where could they check out your music yeah man um i am on instagram original admiral bailey mm -hmm. yeah on the instagram i am on facebook as glendon bailey yeah and um youtube admiral bailey um not on twitter you know you know, me that kind of analog, just kind of getting at the, <laughs> the, the social media aspect. Um, but the song Ignorant is is out now on all major platform. You know, all the people them them know how to buy them record when they want to record by. So it, it's on all of the major platform that 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 um to downloads uh where where song are concerned. So the song is out now, ignorant, it's called ignorant by Christopher Martin and, and Admiral Bailey. And it's on all of the platforms. Big, big there. Before I get you out here, I got one random last question for you. Your dancer, Al Capone, whatever happened to him? Is he still around? Yeah, man, I'm still living in Seaview, you know. Um, he's good, he's healthy, he's all right. As I say, you know, the business change and, you know, there's a, a lot of steel show not happening now, especially in the pandemic. And and we're we're not together again in terms of that combination, but it's it's okay. We we still here and we are good. Good, because a lot of people don't even remember Al Capone. Was just as watching a video the other day. I said, "Holy Al Capone, the dancer!" You know what I mean? Before I get you out here, could you give us a wicked medley before you go? Can you look at the old school and then you know what I mean? So we can start uh, by. I don't think many done. I don't think many done. On the thing, done. Bench or sack home, tell them. At me coming in the at, at me coming in the at, at me coming in at me comfy roll up this mat, at me coming in the at, at me coming in the hat, at me coming in at me comfy roll up this mat. Hey, what a bye bye bye, what a bye 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 bye, what a bye bye bye, what a bye 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 bye, ha ha, big belly man, big belly man, man, big belly man, big belly man, yeah. Say evidently, me ignorant, so not tell me. Chatty, chatty, lippy, lippy, when they might do plenty. Oh, the canteen, the place never empty. Breathless me, have you running from you to send it? Now with that thing that you are dealing, you will not welcome. Cause we not chatty, chatty life, who my long tongue. And everything that that be say, everything done. Me think them no land and me no carry ten to because we ignorant. <laughs> 
Mr. Yeah. Bailey, thank you yeah. so very much for coming through. Again, I know this is the first time we're connecting. Definitely want to connect with you again because you have so much in your mind, but time constraints. So we'll just work with this today and we'll connect again on your time when you're ready again. Yeah, man, no problem, man. Anytime you're ready, man. And you don't know, Admiral Bailey, I said thanks to all the fans them out there. We never left me over the years. And, you know, let's go out and support the record, ignorant. Christopher Martin and Barrel Bailey cause you don't know Big Boss, I got drop it for you, you know. I'm out and I listen it. Yeah. And when I listen it, I know I'm like it. So you don't know Admiral Bailey this uh, respect and thanks for the support. <laughs> Definitely, thank you so much and salute Mr. Bailey. Let me give you an outro and get you out here because this conversation, wicked epic conversation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle and this has been another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.